Okay, so this is going to be phase one for the 4x4 conversion. This is all of the rear driveline components that's going to go in. That's the uh, 4x4 adapter that will come out. That will replace the two-wheel drive adapter, which is longer than this. Okay, so that's the adapter. This is the bracket that it will sit on. This is a transfer case, which will get attached to there. And this is the rear drive shaft, which is a bit shorter than the two-wheel drive drive shaft, rear drive shaft. And for now, I just have all the cabling tied up there. That'll be the last thing that I do after everything's in place. So phase one will be rear drive line. Once this is all installed, I'll begin phase two, which is the uh, front axles, front differential, and front drive shaft. All right, so this is what's gonna come out. That is the long two-wheel drive extension right there, sitting on top of the bracket. So that bracket will come out, and the two-wheel drive extension will come out. Uh, so I can get that in there. Two-wheel drive extensions up there. So that'll come out, and then the two-wheel drive shaft will come out. That's kind of what it looks like before on top of the cross member. So I'll have to drop the cross member to get access to remove that. Okay, drive shaft is out. So now I'm gonna set up, take out these four bolts. One, two, three, four. So that then I can support the transmission and then remove the lower the cross member here and it'll come down with all this and then I'll separate this from this okay and this is the cross brace with the two-wheel drive mount okay and uh, so this piece will come out this top piece right there and then onto those rubber mounts this plate will go attached and then is what it looks like with the cross brace removed. Ah. So there you go. I'm supporting the transmission, and there's the, the two wheel drive. Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? And that's what it looks like with the new plate attached where the old one used to be. And then this housing will sit, will sit like that. And then the transfer case will sit right there. Okay, just a reminder that when you separate the bell, the extension, there's transmission fluid in there. So make sure you got a, a container to catch it all. Because once that, once that gasket separates, it's gonna all start coming out. So luckily I remember from watching another previous video, so I was ready. So just make sure once you get all your bolts off the uh, extension separated, get your pan ready. Whoa, <laughs> almost slipped there. Get your pan ready and uh, catch that fluid. All right, there's the two wheel drive extension removed. There you go. You can see the inside is uh, pretty similar to the four-wheel drive. And here is the uh, transmission with the extension removed. I just left it dripping there for a little while. But we'll have to uh, clean off all that old gasket so we can get a nice seal. Let me put everything back together. Okay, a little note. When you're uh, going to put everything back, when you're putting the adapter back, these two bolts with uh, 
where the exhaust bracket goes are really hard. So this one I had to do by, by open wrench. And that top one, I had to pry down the exhaust like this so that I can get my, my socket up on the top bolt. Here's another tip. Before you put the cross member back on and the plate, you're gonna have to tighten the transfer case to adapter housing bolts. The nuts, all six nuts. My mistake, I guess you live and learn, but I put this back together and I tried to put on the nuts for the transfer case, the six nuts, and I could only reach two of them good and the top two I can only tighten by hand but there wasn't enough clearance to tighten them and then the bottom nuts are completely blocked by this plate here so I'm gonna have to take this back down all right and I've taken the plate off and these are the bolts that I was referring to you won't be able to attach the nuts there with with the plate in place all right finally done rear drive line in place we have let's see here try to get a whole shot all right there's the four-wheel drive extension on top of the plate here's the cross member Here's the transfer case. And here's the rear wheel drive. I mean the rear drive shaft. Alright, so that'll put me back on two-wheel drive with the transfer case in place. Got the wiring here ready for when I get the front end pieces. That'll be phase two. Alright, to be continued. Alright, there's the next phase of what's going in. Front end. I got the differential here. This was the bracket that was hard to find and uh, I didn't even know about until I was looking at all the diagrams. That goes to the front of the car and then I've got the uh, driver and passenger uh, half shafts. All right, so I'll install that and the final piece will be the, uh, the drive shaft, front drive shaft. All right, so I'm getting ready to do the front end. Install the CD axles uh, and the uh, differential. I loosened up the tie rod, loosened up the uh, top ball joint, and then I removed the clevis. That goes at the bottom of the strut. And I'm hoping this will give me enough, enough flex so I, can, uh, I don't have to remove the whole knuckle because, I mean, the bottom uh, ball joint doesn't bother me too much. That's easy to take off. It's just uh, this, uh, the wheel speed sensor here. Uh, I would have to take that off. I would have to take off this, uh, the dust shield, which means I have to reach behind here and remove the, uh, the wheel bearing. And I've heard that's kind of a pain, if, especially if you have a CV axle in there. It's hard to reach those nuts with the boot in the way and everything. So I'm hoping I can get away with with just this so we'll see how it goes all right differentials in place it's there front differential next will be the axles all right, I wasn't able to uh, get the CV joint in the knuckle without having to remove it. So I started trying to take the uh, the um, wheel bearing off. But I was like, you know what, screw that. Let me just try to get the bottom uh, ball joint off. So what I did was I cut a window right there and I was able to put my, uh, my ball joint remover right here, this. I was able to use my ball joint remover by slipping it through the back and through the window and I popped the ball joint so I'll remove the knuckle now. Alright, there it is. There it 
is the axle back in place. Right. Now forget this. Okay. So I had to undo the top and bottom bowl joints, tie rod, clevis top, clevis bottom, and there was a fifth. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's five. Clevis top, clevis bottom, bowl joint top, bowl joint bottom, and tie rod. And that, that gives you enough room to do everything. Oh, and then the window that I cut, which is optional if you want to take uh, the wheel hub apart that's fine but I did that for uh, to remove the bottom bowl joint all right all done with the front end let's see here okay we got uh, where is it okay here's the passenger axle here's this See it there. Driver axle going through the clevis. And all that's needed now is to finish connecting the front drive shaft right there. It'll be done. There it is. There's the last piece about to go in. I'm going to connect up. The front and the back, the north and the south. There we go. All right, front drive shaft is in. All the way to here. I know it's a bad angle, but there's a connection to the transfer case side, and there's the differential side. I had to disconnect the. Um, this uh, sensor from the exhaust right here because I couldn't get the shaft in so I unscrewed this so I can slip it through alright here is the uh, the wiring I put a switch I don't know if you can see it put a switch right there so when the when you go into park See this lever? When you go into park, it pushes the lever. So that's my kill switch right there. See, it goes into that. Oops. All right, so here's the uh, four wheel drive control. Here's the switch. Here's the LED. I've got it connected to a relay, which is powered by the lighter. So while the car is off, there is no power. Alright, I turn the car on. I have power. Okay. And this will only receive power while in park. So you cannot shift the 4x4 while the car is moving or any other gear. I just added that as a safety precaution. So if I go to reverse, you'll see this. there's no power. No power going to the here, no power going to the transfer case. Okay. So at about 4.7 volts, we're on two wheel drive. All right, one click, six volts, we're on four high. Another click in the high sevens, we're uh, four, uh, neutral. And the final one in the nines, we're on four low, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to neutral. Right here, uh, uh, make sure it caught. Uh, okay, let's go to reverse. Okay, if I go to reverse on neutral, You'll see, car does not move. Even though I'm on reverse, because I'm in neutral. All right, so let's go ahead and shift back to park. And let's bring it down to the four volts. There's a four high, and there's four low. Go to reverse. Okay, and now we move. Voila. Simple as that. There you go. There's how it works. Alright, 
So we're in two wheel drive. Let's go ahead and shift the drive. Front wheel and back wheel turning. Front wheel still, it's two wheel drive. Go ahead and shift to to too high. Go ahead and put it in drive. There you go. Four wheel drive. Front. There's the back. Hold well on.